one case that's always fascinated me is the California gold mine discoveries. In the 19th century, gold was discovered in California and miners went there to get the gold. To get the gold, they dug tunnels into the sides of mountains like Table Mountain here in California in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And deep inside the tunnels, the miners found human bones and human artifacts. For example, they found many of these stone mortars and pestles. And what makes these discoveries so interesting to me is that they were found in layers of solid rock that belonged to the early part of the geological period called the Eocene, which means they would be about 50 million years old. These discoveries were reported to the scientific world by Dr. J.D. Whitney. He was the chief government geologist of California. His report was published by Harvard University, but we don't hear very much about these discoveries today because of the process of knowledge filtration. Here is the scientist most responsible for the knowledge filtering in this particular case. This is William Holmes, an anthropologist who worked at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. And he wrote, if Dr. Whitney had understood the theory of human evolution, he would not have published those reports. In other words, if the facts did not support the theory, then the facts had to be set aside. And that's what happened. A few years ago, I was a consultant for a television program called The Mysterious Origins of Man, which was shown on NBC, the largest American television network. And the producer had read my book, Forbidden Archaeology, so he got in touch with me. He wanted to include some of the cases from the book in this documentary. So I told him he should go to the Museum of Anthropology at the University of California at Berkeley because I knew that some of the 50 million year old human artifacts from the California gold mines are still in the collection of that museum. So he went there, but the museum officials refused to allow him to see the artifacts, what to speak of, film them. Nevertheless, we were able to find some photographs that were taken of the artifacts by Dr. Whitney in the 19th century. So we did have some imagery to use in the television program. It was interesting, when, when scientists in America found out that NBC was going to show this program, they tried to stop NBC from showing it. They weren't successful. Actually, it was a very popular program. And Recently, a, a DVD has been released that has the entire program, plus many of the outtakes, you know, interviews with me and others that weren't included in the broadcast show. But when, when scientists found out that NBC was going to show this, they tried to stop NBC. They weren't successful. So then they went to the government. They went to the Federal Communications Commission, which is the agency of the government in the United States that regulates the TV broadcasting industry. And they asked the government to investigate NBC, to censure NBC, to force NBC to broadcast apologies, public apologies for having shown this program. And they also wanted the government to fine NBC millions of dollars so that they would never do anything like this again. Now I'm happy to say the government didn't do this, 
But it was interesting to me that these sorts of attempts were made uh, to, to prevent this information from reaching the people. Now more recently, I went back to the museum myself. I was preparing a report about these discoveries for a meeting of the World Archaeological Congress, the world's largest international organization of archaeologists. And perhaps because of my connection with the World Archaeological Congress, the museum officials decided they would let me see the artifacts. And they're not kept in the museum itself. They're kept in a storage building several miles from the museum. I had to be accompanied every step of the way by a museum official and entering this building was quite an experience you know, with all these card readers and security, security levels to go through. But the artifacts are still there and these are some of them. These are some of the 50 million year old artifacts from the California gold mines. And many you know, people you know, have seen the movie you know, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where in the final scenes they go into the basements of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington and see all kinds of discoveries that are you know, being kept from the public. And many people think, well, that's just Hollywood. But these things actually do happen. There are human artifacts that are extremely old that aren't displayed to the public but which are in the collections of these museums. After studying some of Dr. Whitney's original reports, I went into the mountains of California. And this is Table Mountain as it looks today. And we were able to relocate some of the old 19th century gold mining tunnels where these objects were discovered and it should be possible to do more research there. The oldest objects I found in my research come from South Africa. Miners in the western Transvaal region have found many of these round objects. They're made of hematite, which is a naturally occurring type of iron. The most interesting feature is the parallel grooves that go around the center of each object. These were shown on the NBC television program, but before NBC agreed to allow them to be shown, they said, you have to, show, you have to give them to an independent company of metallurgists to examine. So we did that and the metallurgists gave a report saying they could not explain how those grooves could have formed naturally in the layers of the earth, which means they had to have been made by someone with human-like intelligence. Now these objects, these hematite spheres, are found solidly embedded in mineral deposits over two billion years old. So. we see here. But when I did eight years of research into the entire history of archaeology, I found that there is physical evidence showing that humans like us have existed for millions and millions of years on Earth, going all the way back to the very beginnings of the history of life here. And this evidence takes the form of human bones, human footprints, and human artifacts many, many millions of years old. So I documented this evidence in this book, Forbidden Archaeology, which is about 900 pages long. Some people call it forbidding archaeology because it just seems like too much to pick up. <clears throat> so we brought out this book in a, a shorter edition called The Hidden History of the Human Race, which has now been translated in, into 20 languages. This is the Russian edition, the French edition, this is the Bulgarian edition. <laughs> now the, the evidence that I document in these books is not very well known because of a process of knowledge filtration that operates in the world of science. We can call the, the blue box up there the knowledge filter and it represents the fixed ideas that most scientists today now have about this question of human origins. 
So reports of evidence that conform to these fixed ideas will pass through this intellectual filter very easily, which means that students will read about this evidence in their textbooks, people will see scientists talking about it on TV shows. If they go to the, to the local museum, they'll see these discoveries. But if we have evidence that radically contradicts these fixed ideas, they tend to be ignored, forgotten, even actively suppressed. So I'm going to give a few examples of the kind of evidence that I'm talking about. This is Virginia Steen McIntyre. She's an American geologist who I know personally. When she was a young woman, uh, just after she got her PhD, she was a rising star in her profession. But then she was called to Mexico to date an archaeological site called Huayatlaco. Uh, this is the excavation at Huayatlaco. The American and Mexican archaeologists there found human artifacts in layers of solid rock. And of course, they wanted to know how old they were. So they called a team of geologists to date the site. Virginia Steen McIntyre <clears throat> and her colleagues used four different methods to date the site. And they got an age of about 250,000 years. But the archaeologists said, we can't accept that. That's impossible. According to their theories, human beings capable of making the artifacts didn't exist anywhere in the world at that time. They hadn't evolved yet. So they refused to publish the age for the site given by their own hand-picked team of geologists. And Virginia Steen McIntyre decided, well, I'll independently publish you know, the age for the site. If these archaeologists won't publish it, I will. So she did that. And when she did, she experienced an extreme negative backlash from her colleagues in the scientific world. She was labeled a troublemaker, a publicity seeker, a maverick. <clears throat> she wrote to the editor of the journal that published her, her report, not being an anthropologist, I didn't realize how deeply woven into our thought the current theory of human evolution has become. Our work at Huayatlaco has been rejected by most archaeologists because it contradicts that theory, period. So this is how this knowledge filtering process works. 